Today, the Federal Ethics Committee is looking into the controversy, hearing from a government watchdog group that had tough words for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Finance Minister Bill Morneau and their involvement in the story. The Ethics Committee also hearing from Mary Dawson. She is Canada's former Ethics Commissioner who did find the Prime Minister guilty of breaking the ethics law several years ago. Our commentators today, Liberal strategist Susan Smith is back with us. Conservative strategist Andrew Brander joins us and NDP strategist Farouk Karim is standing by too. Andrew, let me start with you here. Uh, what's your read on what we've heard so far and what's at stake here for the Ethics Committee? Uh, certainly a lot. The government's not getting an easy ride on this one and it's not going away anytime soon. Every day, new information. Today, more bad news for the Trudeau government uh, as the Ethics Committee starts to dig into it. They're just starting to dig into this now. Uh, hearing from two more very harsh critics of the Prime Minister, of course, Democracy Watch earlier. We're going to hear uh, later from the ethics czar herself, uh, Mary Dawson, one of the uh, one of the first commissioners um, uh, to the role, and she's going to speak about the reason why the office exists and it's it and and the purpose behind it to avoid situations exactly like this where, uh, you know, elected officials end up breaching, uh, breaching the code. And it might be the dead of summer, but unfortunately for, uh, for the prime minister, Canadians are actually tuning into this. And so that's what's at stake, which is, which is people, are, people are stuck to their TVs watching this like it's an episode of reality TV. And the government still hasn't figured out exactly uh, a way that they're planning on uh, planning on addressing this. Farouk, I'm curious to get your read on the story as well. Yeah, I think I agree with my conservative colleague. Uh, the, the bottom line is, even if you take the uh, the story under its best light, the government's light, that there was no ill intention, it was done in good faith, and it was to help kids. Even if you take that story there's still a conflict of interest at the middle of it. And so that's the main problem that the government has is that he cannot, he, he cannot seem to be getting away from the story because there's so much to the story depending on what angle you take it. And we will find out in the coming weeks, starting today with the, with the Ethics co Committee and the investigation by the commissioner eventually, more details because we need to know from uh, the creation of the, pro uh, of the of the program to the start of the implementation to the cancellation, we need to know all that happened because it doesn't make sense. The first line of defense of, go of the government doesn't make sense that we would be the sole and the best and the only organization uh, ready to do this program. That doesn't make sense. And until they have a good answer to that, this is going to continue. Susan, you've heard from the left and the right. Uh, what's your take? I'm going to drive straight down the middle, which is where I usually end up, Todd, or at least I try to. Uh, look, the, the ethics commissioner is Mario Dion is looking into this, and we will. My colleagues have already uh, decided, it seems, what the outcome of that is going to be. But I think we should leave it up to the ethics commissioner. They've to admitted do the investigation, to it. To do the investigation and determine what's what. I think what will be interesting what you hear from Mary Dawson today is the, the various. Um, the, the full role of the ethics commissioner's office, and that's where they serve on a day-to-day -day basis for people to be touching base and and uh, using them as a sound check or a sounding board on what's uh, programs or decisions or whatever that's going forward. I think the main thing we have to go back to it, and everybody alluded it to it, is that this uh, program was put in place very quickly to help university students. The prime minister, we heard from him in an unprecedented way explaining that he had pushed back on the decision. He had asked for more information. It's up to the ethics commissioner now to have a look. I also would politely disagree with Andrew. Uh, I don't know who you're hanging out with, Andrew, but mm. I think most Canadians are outside enjoying the great weather, and they're fundamentally worried about whether their kids are going back into the classroom or their grandkids are going back to the classroom or what back to work is going to look like for them. Their CERB, their emergency benefit check, the wage subsidies for people who are employers, uh, those are the things that people are concerned about. Putting food on the table, I don't think they're riveted by uh, the issues going on in committee at Parliament Hill. I know it's very interesting to those of us in the bubble, in the political bubble, but I don't think it's what is riveting Canadians in the final weeks of summer. Andrew, what do you think? 
Uh, well, you know, with with all due respect to Susan, I I don't agree that I, I I don't think the approach here certainly should be waiting for the ethics commissioner to issue a report. The fact is, the prime minister has already said uh, that you know there were things that were done incorrectly. So I'm not I'm not actually the one he, casting he judgment didn't say here. That actually, he, Andrew, he has he said say he that. has he said, indicated. Andrew, he did say that, sure, there could be a perception issue, but I don't think it's up to, I think it's up to the ethics commissioner to let the ethics commissioner do their job. Look, th there's playoff hockey on, there's playoff basketball <laughs> on, where there's occasional baseball games on. I think that's what Canadians are focusing their attention on these days. They're trying to eke out the last minutes of summer. It's Yeah, not I, I just want to get Farouk's read. Farouk, what do you think of how closely people are or are not paying attention to all of this? I think Susan is right. As a diehard Habs fan, I'm happy that the playoff <laughs> hockey is on and the, and the Leafs are bye-bye. Uh, but on a serious note, um, the, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's going to go on. I think, like, I, I get what Susan is saying, that for sure people are more interested in the, 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 the return to school, the pandemic, my paycheck, and stuff like that. And I, I could, I, I, for sure, that's what I hear around me. But the link between that, those important issues in people's mind and the government we scandal issue, the link is the trust. In a period of pandemic where we need to trust our leaders with decision making, decision making that they do with uncertainty, with not all the facts, we need to believe that they're doing that in the best interest and they're doing it the best they can. And, and, and when the we scandal comes up, it puts into jeopardy that trust that we need in a period of pandemic. And that's why it's so important for the government to do something about it, to move on. But the only way he can move on, I think, I believe, two things. One, take accountability. Somebody has to pay for this mistake, and it cannot be a staffer, it cannot be the public service. That's one thing. The second thing is there's $900 million that ki that student needed where is that money? And how are we going to make sure that the money goes to students who are in need right now? If we can do those two things and take it, and the government taking accountability, I think we can move on. How about that accountability aspect, Andrew? You know, there, there is recent polling showing that close to half of Canadians in this, this survey that was done, I believe, by Leger, uh, you know, saying, look, if it turns out there's an ethical breach again, number three for this prime minister, that maybe it is time to look to a fall election as well. Uh, in other words, you know, where does the buck stop in all this? What do you think? Yeah, there, there certainly needs to be accountability in this, but I think that can be found within the parliament. Let's not, let's not forget that this parliament's only sat for about 50 days since the last election. And I, I think all of your viewers will appreciate the irony here uh, that should the government lose a confidence motion, the fate of, of this government is actually going to end up in the hands of the governor general, of course, who they've just spent the last week distancing themselves from. Uh, so I think I think to the question of whether there's actually an appetite for an election, that's ultimately going to be up to the NDP and Jagmeet Singh to uh, to determine. But I'd agree, I'd agree, I'd concede a little bit to Susan in saying, you know, yeah, there are other priorities here with the uncertainty of COVID, everything going on. What I don't think Canadians want is another election, but I do think they are asking for accountability and they do want answers. Last word goes to you, Susan. What do you think? I, I don't think we're going to see a fall election. I'll agree with Andrew on that. Uh, Parliament, because of COVID, because of the, the uncertainty, because of, you know, Donald Trump, quite frankly, and trade tariffs, uh, Canadians aren't going to want to be uh, go to the polls. I don't think the other opposition parties have any money in the bank to go to the polls yet. Mm -hmm. And the Conservatives are still waiting to have a leader. And I'm not sure they're going to get the kind of momentum and bump that they're looking for out of that. Canadians want the government to figure out what's going on with the CERB, EI, the wage subsidy, help put a program and a plan in place to get the economy kick-started. And most of all, they want to make sure that the, we continue to have a flattened curve from COVID rates and infections and that we don't see, and I don't think we will, um, the surge and the, the, you know, the, the tidal wave that's going on in the U.S. So... Canadians want the government to look after our economic health. They want to. They want to. Ha they want help looking after our physical health, and getting the economy and our families and everybody safe, and, and moving and functioning well in the context of this pandemic. That's what I think the priority is this fall for government. Susan Smith and Andrew Brander and for Kareem joining us on this Monday. Hey, great to see all three of you again on the air. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks, Saudi. Thank you. Thank you.